Muy buena, bienvenido a un vídeo más aquí a Rollcore Games, vuestro canal sobre videojuegos. Vamos a ver el Capcom Showcase que quedan unos 4 minutos para que empiece y la verdad que con muchísimas ganas de ver las novedades. Ya sabéis, una de las cositas que queremos ver es más sobre Dragon Dogma, esperamos que Resident Evil 4 y alguna que otra sorpresa más. Así que poneros cómodos y vamos a disfrutar de este evento. Ya sabéis que en el canal de Rollcore Games tenéis resubido todos los vídeos, incluso este cuando ya después se emita, lo resubiré para que podáis disfrutarlo y tenerlo ahí para la posterioridad. Pues nada, muy buenas, bienvenido a todos. Se me ha ido el chapa abajo. Qué mal esperarse que se me ha ido el chapa abajo. Es que estoy, estoy tonto. Se me ha ido el chapa completamente abajo. Ahí está. Y nada, poneros cómodo porque vamos a poner ya el sonido poco a poco y cambiamos de toma para escucharlo. Están poniendo trailers, muchos trailers. Estamos viendo aquí. A ver qué hay. Así el volumen. Y vamos a, a, a disfrutarlo. Massive Expansion. Vale. Pues nada. Está todo bien, ¿no? Yo creo que sí. Yo por lo menos estoy viendo la barra de sonido subiendo, las dos. Y eso es bueno. 2 minutos 50. Yo no sé cuáles son vuestras expectativas. Así que... Si queréis soltarla aquí por el chat, bueno, se me olvidaba, claro, el Street Fighter 6, ahora de esto, pues me he acordado. El Street Fighter 6 seguro que enseñan algo. Street Fighter 6 o 5, 6, 6, era ya. Madre mía. Y, que empecé, y pensar que yo pensé, empecé con el Street Fighter 2 en la Super Nintendo, como pasa el tiempo, demasiado bestia. Y este es todo un clásico. Este es todo un clásico. Darkstarkers. Ay... Bueno, ¿por, ¿por qué se llamaban Pijante? ¿Le cambiaron el nombre? Mm. Cyberbots. Ah, esto es el recopilatorio, ¿no? De juego de lucha. Yo al final no sé si salió en físico o no, ¿no? En Switch. Molaría tenerlo, igual que el eh, compilatorio de juego. Y Street Fighter 2 Anniversary Edition. Ese no lo conocí yo. Y este es el Pusser Fighter. Ah, no, Jane Fighter, vale. Y el Super Pusser. Este lo tengo yo en 360. En digital, en el módulo de arcade. Más de 500 piezas de ilustraciones. Eso mola un montón. Y la banda sonora. Modo de entrenamiento. Grabar en mitad de camino. No sé qué plataforma salía, ¿no? Aunque yo soy muy clásico para la banda sonora del Street Fighter, me gustan los temas antiguos, sobre todo. Personalmente lo que más me gusta, ¿sabes? Nintendo Switch, pero claro, es que tendrían que indicar si es digital o físico. Hmm. Para la selección. El personaje. Bueno, supongo que ahí estaban hablando del loop. La verdad que un legado, la banda sonora de los Street Fighter. ¡Y ya ha empezado bien! Mola... Yo estaba pensando, molaría mucho ver un vídeo así de Konami, ¿no? Ocho. ¡Siete! ¡Seis! ¡Cinco! ¡Cuatro! ¡Tres! ¡Dos! ¡Uno! Y empezamos. Cero. Y ahora pone Resident Evil 0. <risa> Nueva versión. <risa> Uf. Capco. ¿Sí? Oye, se han curra la, pre pre la presentación, ¿eh? Está bien currada. 
Welcome to the Capcom Showcase, where we'll share exciting new updates on our upcoming games. We have some surprises in store, and hope you enjoy the show. Monster Hunter. Me cambia un poquito de posición porque estoy tapando los subtítulos. Tampoco es plan. Hello, everyone. I'm Ryozo Tsujimoto, producer of the Monster Hunter series. Thank you for tuning in to today's Capcom Showcase. We're excited to bring you the latest info on Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which will finally be released at the end of this month. To kick things off, we've got a brand new trailer to show you. Let's take a look. Vale, tengo un pequeño problema técnico. Que estaba escuchando sonido de fondo y no sé yo de dónde. Qué pena que abandonara el juego con lo chulo que estaba. Se ve con poca resolución, ¿no? Esperarse. De verdad, la calidad directo de, de YouTube tendría que mejorarse. En esa hecha. Además que estos son falsos directos, esto está pregrabado, ¿sabes? A ver, los bichos mola un montón, eh, los monstruos. Sunbreak. Bueno. Junio 30. Supongo que será una expansión de pago. First let me introduce a returning locale. The jungle area that debuted in the second generation of Monster Hunter games is back in Sunbreak. You'll notice that the jungle's appearance changes over time. It's a nostalgic area that both veteran hunters and new players are sure to enjoy. And of course, we've updated the jungle with new elements and endemic life specifically for its return in Sunbreak. Longtime fans can look forward to exploring the devastated ruins around the coastal area. Espinas. El enemigo, ¿no? From the Monster Hunter Frontier series comes Espinas. Espinas means thorns in Spanish. As <laughs> no me diga. Implies, thorny scales cover its body. Normally, Espinas enjoys a quiet life and sleeps peacefully, but when it senses danger nearby, it explodes into a violent rampage. Even though it can seem docile, Espinas has a two-faced nature that can be extremely dangerous. The flagship monster of Monster Hunter 4, Gore Magala, is back. Gore Magala is a sightless creature with black scales and sensitive wing membranes used to sense the presence of prey. As Gore Magala's sensing ability increases, its two horns change form and it enters the frenzy state. While in a frenzy state, it gets so powerful that the ground beneath begins to break and it uses its huge claws as an anchor during powerful attacks. Muy bestia. Daimyo Hermitu. The trailer also shows the Daimyo Hermitar and the Pyrorachna Kadaki subspecies, which adds explosive elements, makes its fiery debut. There are still more monsters that have yet to be revealed, so stay tuned for more sun bueno, quedan más monstruos, ¿no? 
there's one more thing I want to share with you all, so please watch the following video. Más información, vamos a ver. Prueba la demo, a ver. Jungle, vale. Tetranador. Tengo la duda si este juego se puede jugar bien solo. Malcelo. La demo el día 14. A free demo for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak is coming to both Nintendo Switch and Steam. Pues nada, ya the demo will be available to download as shown. In the jungle locale introduced today, you'll be able to take on Astalos. The new Switch skill swap system as well as new Silk Bind attacks will be available for play. We'll have a few tutorial quests available for new players that will teach you the basic mechanics and moves. After mastering the basics, you'll be ready to take on other monsters in the demo to test your skills. For veteran hunters, an advanced quest will also be available where you can take on an extra challenging version of Sunbreak's flagship monster, Malzino. The demo supports multiplayer for up to four players, and there's no mm. limit to the number of times you can attempt quests. Get an early sin limite. Eso de las demos demo. con límite creo que era una de las cosas peores que sacó Nintendo. Pues creo que la primera vez que lo vi en la consola de Nintendo. Vale, pues nada, vamos a ver el juego. Vale, también van a sacar después, es de pago y después sacarán DLC gratuito. Qué bonito. Our first title update scheduled for August 2022 will add Lucent Nargakuga. Narrakuka, Narrakuka. This monster will be a part of the first free title update to come to Sunbreak post launch. In addition to the Lucent Nargakuga, we're also adding a new area, the iconic Forlorn Arena. With future title updates, we plan on including additional monsters, variants, and more. Our title update release schedule is as follows. The second title update is planned for a fall 2022 release. Navidades. Ah, no. Otoño, Navidades. And there's more to come in 2023. Each title update will include additional monsters and other elements. We hope you'll check them out. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak will be released worldwide on June 30th, 2022. Bueno, no olvidarse que creo que este fin de semana sale Xenoblade. Y el mes que viene, a final de mes, creo que sale eh, Fire Emblem. O sea. Vale, pues nada, ya está. Ya está todo lo que hay que hacer. Ya está el juego disponible. 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 Ya está el juego That wraps up our news for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the rest Venga, of the Capcom Venga, pasa ya de Monster Hunter, quiero ver más cosita. Now we will present the Capcom Spotlight Corner. Esto tiene pinta de ser un formato que van a usarlo más de una vez. Street Fighter 6 coming soon. The next generation of Street Fighter is currently in development and has something fun for everyone to enjoy. Fan favorites Ryu and Chun-Li will be heating up the battle stage right alongside some of the newest fighters, Luke and Jamie. With breathtaking new visuals, 
unleash unprecedented battles with the all-new battle system. Street Fighter VI reimagines the fighting game experience with new modes that will allow you to experience the Street Fighter universe. What awaits you in this game? Look forward to our next announcement later this year. Este año habrá otro anuncio, vale. Celebrating the 35th anniversary of the Street Fighter franchise, the Capcom Fighting Collection will be released later this month. Included is the first ever release of Red Earth outside of arcades, Hyper Street Fighter 2, five Darkstalkers titles, and more. Ten of the best fighting games from the arcade era are included ah, in the Se llamaba Darkstalker, ya dice yo. All ya of the titles included will be playable online. So play a match against your friends or fight online against new challengers. Enjoy a full range of online matches. Capcom Fighting Collection will launch on June 24th, 2022. Pre-orders are available now. Please Xbox One y PlayStation 4. Information. Nada de PlayStation Series X ni Series X. Again. Capcom Arcade Stadium has expanded. Capcom Arcade Second Stadium coming July 22nd, 2022. Saturday Night Slam Masters, Magic Sword, Black Tiger, Eco Fighters, and more combined for a total of 32 arcade titles. In addition to a bundle that features all 32 titles, each title is available for individual purchase and features with lots of quality of life options. All players will receive Sun Sun for free when downloading the base game. The Sun -sun. bundle featuring all 32 titles is available for pre-order now. Get Display Frame Set 1 as a bonus for pre-ordering. To celebrate, get the Capcom Arcade Stadium title, Street Fighter 2, The World Warrior. Free for a limited time. We hope you try out the Capcom Arcade Stadium as well. Habrá que probarlo. Next up is an update on Capcom's new team-based action game, Exoprimal. Hi everyone. I'm Takuto Yo pensaba que iban a empezar fuerte con el Resident Evil 4. We have a new trailer to show today that includes lots of gameplay. Let's take a look. I am the artificial intelligence Leviathan. Your personnel data indicates you are a suitable specimen to join an ongoing experiment. Under my supervision, Ivius Corp conducts its most important research here. Welcome to Pikitoa Island. Takom presenta. You have been selected for a live combat test. The first team to complete their assignment wins. Que miro juego online como que, que no me llama. Exhaustive records of human history. These animals are riddled with errors and institutional bias. Your species is susceptible to mass delusion. Fascinating. Humans dread the other. You seek to evolve, yet you do not want to change. You tear down curtains. Si van a sacar dinosaurio, ¿por qué no saca un dino crisis? Vaya pena. No entiendo. Combat data is required to develop the exosuit. At IBS, we're always reaching for better. Always. Humanity resists quantification, an interesting variable. Within your behavior lies the answer. A ver, se ve chulo, pero es que no me apetece jugar juego muy jugador. Humans, fight and die for me. Y no ve campañitas. Carnage module online. I call your attention to the unstoppable Raptor Horde. Calculating chance of employee retention. Chance calculated at 8.7%. You must fight harder than ever if you wish to survive. A more grueling combat experiment is called for. You will now witness a small fragment of the war game. 
You need to keep fighting until we can figure out how to destroy the body. Exoprimal, Exoprimal, vaya tela, 2023. We hope you enjoyed the trailer. Now, I will get into more detail about the game. Developed by Ivius Corporation, Leviathan is a next-gen AI that guides players throughout Exoprimal via voice navigation and augmented reality displays. Leviathan appears before players as a massive human-like figure or as a surveillance drone called a Watcher. The trailer shows Leviathan unleashing hordes of dinosaurs. Players will battle these dinosaurs after being forced into Leviathan's infinitely repeating war games. Why is Leviathan bringing dinosaurs into our world? And why is Leviathan repeating these war games? Solve the mystery by playing the main game mode, Dino Survival. Let me provide a brief gameplay introduction. Exoprimal is a team-based action game. In Dino Survival, two squads of five race to complete objectives. Teams must follow Leviathan's directives and complete the mission before their rivals to win. These directives will feature a dynamic mix of missions. In fact, we just saw some in the latest trailer. There's Dinosaur Call, where teams must eliminate a specific dinosaur. In VTOL Defense, teams protect a grounded aircraft from dinosaur onslaughts. In Data Key Security, teams escort a valuable asset to its destination. Destroy targets in Omega Charge with the powerful Omega Hammer. In Energy Taker, teams compete to collect the most energy. You also saw a glimpse of a strange and terrifying creature known as a Neo-Tyrannosaurus. While there are situations where you directly engage enemy players, there are other times where you band together with rivals to take down a major foe. This variety of missions will keep players on their toes. In Dino Survival, the missions change based on players' progression through the game. The experience will be different every time you play, even in matches with familiar surroundings and objectives. By playing Dino Survival, you will unlock story sequences and also earn rewards such as experience points to increase your player and exosuit levels. Parece que el modo historia es cooperativo también. Hay more details about this at a later date. Now that we've detailed Dino Survival, let's move on to exosuits. We showed two new exosuits today. Barrage is an assault roll exosuit. It uses explosives to set areas ablaze and bombards enemies with ricochet grenades. Vigilant is also an assault roll exosuit. It wields a destructive railgun to snipe from long range. We have even more exosuits to share with you in the future, so look forward to upcoming announcements. We have one last announcement for today. Welcome to my research facility. We're conducting a closed network test for Exoprimal. Players will be able to try the game ahead of release. Help us test the game's online infrastructure and make improvements ahead of launch. Sign up to participate today. The closed network test will allow you to experience no Dino Survival no before the game's launch next year. We look forward to having you join in. That's all for today. We plan to release Exoprimal in 2023. Until then, keep an eye on our website and social media. Thank you for watching. Next, we have a message about Dragon's Dogma, which yeah. recently celebrated its 10th oh. anniversary. Yeah, decimal aniversario. Madre mía. Como pasa el tiempo, no? Me saltó el copyright con este juego, vaya tela. Es verdad, la serie de Netflix que no la he visto. Me acabo de acordar. Hi everyone, I'm Hideaki Atsuno, game director at Capcom. 
A few weeks ago, we celebrated the 10th anniversary of Dragon's Dogma. Thanks to all of you for joining us in this celebration. The world of Dragon's Dogma has since spread to various different kinds of media, ranging from games such as Dragon's Dogma and the Dark Arisen expansion, to digital comics and a Netflix original animated series. In the coming days, we will be releasing a video celebrating 10 years of Dragon's Dogma, talking about how and what Dragon's Dogma came to be. So whether you're a longtime fan or just curious about the series, we'll have something for you to enjoy. We hope you check it out. Once again, thank you all so much. And now we have a bunch of updates from the Resident Evil franchise. Hello, everyone. I'm Tsuyoshi Kanda, the producer of Resident Evil Village. Thanks to all of our fans, Village has sold over 6 million units worldwide. Everyone on the team is incredibly happy to see so many people enjoy the game. Thank you for your support. The Resident Evil series continues to bring fun experiences to people around the world. We want longtime fans and people who are new to Resident Evil to enjoy this storied franchise. Let's start with this video. Vamos a ver. Dieciséis años después de que se fuera. To live a normal life. Evil in time. Shut up. What's going on? Paranoia, não? Just like me. Rose, se nova DLC. It's time. A mercenário. Marking the target. It's showtime! Now, what next? Whoa. Tercera persona? Oh, yeah. Ahora solo falta que lo hagan en el 6. Perdón, en el 7. Expansión navideña. Vale, en no sé, septiembre. Octubre. El 28 de octubre. Sorry to keep you waiting. We're happy to reveal the DLC for Resident Evil Village we promised last June. We think this new experience will be worth the wait. This DLC includes three major features. First, the third person mode. Many people asked for this, and we were able to add it into the game. Now, you'll be able to see Ethan as he desperately fights for survival. Players that have already experienced Ethan's journey can enjoy the new perspectives and animations too. The mercenaries returns with additional orders in an arcade-style action game where focus has been put on the exhilarating feeling of defeating relentless hordes of enemies. New stages are included, as well as additional playable characters such as Chris Redfield and Heisenberg. Of course, Lady Dimitrescu will be there too. We've really fueled this mode up. 
Enjoy looking down on your foes from over nine feet above as Lady Dimitrescu slashes her enemies aside. The third edition is one you've surely been waiting for, an additional story, Shadows of Rose. Today, let me introduce just a bit of this story. Rose, the beloved daughter of the main protagonist, Ethan, is now a grown-up main character in this new story mode. In this sequel to the main story of Village, you can experience Rose's struggles with the terrifying powers she was born with. To break free of the curse of her powers, she enters the consciousness of the Megamycete. There, she meets a girl who looks just like her. In this mysterious realm of consciousness, time and space is warped beyond recognition. Rose is guided by a being who calls himself Michael, who might be of assistance with removing her powers. Shadows of Rose is set completely in a third-person perspective. In the realm of consciousness, you won't only face creatures, but the world itself seems to be attacking you. Enjoy the horror of the world itself being your greatest enemy. Hmm. How will Rose find freedom from her mysterious powers? The DLC for Resident Evil Village Winter's Expansion includes all three of these major additions. In addition, Resident Evil Village Gold Edition, a bundle of Winter's Expansion with the base game, will be released simultaneously. The release vale. date is planned for October 28th, 2022. Resident Evil RE-verse will also begin service on the same date, October 28th, 2022. We hope that you are looking forward to it. Reverse. No lo he probado. Creo que estaba ya like hace that? tiempo. Also, as already announced, we are working on making the main story of Village available on Mac, so that even more people can enjoy Resident Evil. ¿Para sacarlo en Mac? In addition, the main story of Village is planned to be playable on PlayStation VR 2. We are working hard on bringing you the ultimate immersive experience worthy of next gen in Resident Evil Village. So look forward to future announcements. Up next, okay. a game that was announced just a few days ago. Vale, ahora sí, Resident Evil 4. Veinticuatro de marzo. Uf. Diez días antes de mi cumpleaños. Bueno, menos. Ocho días antes de mi cumpleaños. Guitarrita. Flamenco. <risa> Por fin. Ambientado en España. Se ve muy bien gráficamente. To vacation, eh? Venga, a enseñar más cosas. sacred body. It begins now. A ver cuando hacen el code Verónica, de verdad que es con lo que más ganas tengo, un code Verónica en condiciones. If I could just forget what happened that night. The pain. Even for a second. This time it can be different. It has to. ¿Habrá utilizado hablador en español en vez de mexicano? Hi everyone, I'm Yasuhiro Anpo, director of Resident Evil 4. And I'm Yoshiaki Hirabayashi, producer of Resident Evil 4. 
This title is a reimagining of Resident Evil 4, based on the original 2005 release. Similar to other titles in the series, we are carefully preserving what makes the original title special, while updating it with modern flourishes for everyone to enjoy when it launches in 2023. Today, we'll reintroduce a bit of the game's story. Resident Evil 4 is set six years after the events in Raccoon City, depicted in Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. Sí, claro. The main character of the game, Leon S. Kennedy, survived the Raccoon City incident and was assigned as an agent directly under the President of the United States. Leon is dispatched to a quiet village in Europe as part of a en mission Europa, to no España, the cabrón. daughter of the President. <laughs> You might notice Leon is much more mature and fearless due to his past experiences. The Ganado, the main enemies of this game, wait for him. Ganado, el Ganado. <laughs> the experience of being attacked by hordes of crazed Ganado is truly an iconic moment from Resident Evil. In order to truly bring out the concept of terror of people controlled by madness, the Ganado have been completely redesigned. Let's take a closer look at the game itself. Ooh. The over-the-shoulder camera returns, of course. Leon arrives at a dense and dangerous forest. We want to nail the feeling of loneliness and fear of not knowing what lies ahead, even more so than the original. Of course, there will also be thrilling battles. Ya tenemos juego de primavera. Madre the recent Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 should find this familiar. Look forward to future announcements where we'll have more information on the game. Yeah? Resident Evil 4 is being developed for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Series S, and PC. Eso nada más. The release date will be March 24th, 2023. We are aiming to create a Resident Evil 4 that everyone can enjoy. So please look forward to it. Thank you. A ver si sacan el code Verónica. Después de este. Aunque el code Verónica, si el code Verónica fue anterior al 4, salió en Dreamcast y en Play 2, y después salió el 4 en GameCube. What did you think about the latest information on Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4? Both games are currently in development. For those that can't wait for the release, check out the following games. Me tiene que ver los siguientes juegos y no me enseña más de Resident Evil. Vamos, ¿tú qué crees que me va a emocionar? Venga, sorpréndeme. Vale, lo de remasterizado. Ahora lo que le faltaría es un modo de tercera persona a este juego. Y el 3 está muy chulo, pero me, me decepcionó un poquito por el tema de la historia. Faltan cositas bastante icónicas del otro 3, ¿sabes? Del clásico. Pero tengo la impresión de que se hizo más, más apresurado. Creemos que no pasa lo mismo con el 4. Resident Evil 7, which brought the series back to its survival horror roots and the reimagining of classic titles Resident Evil 2 Esto es buenísimo, and el Resident dos. Evil 3. El dos mucho mejor que el 3. These three titles, built with RE Engine, return with current gen features including support for 4K, high frame rate, and ray tracing, as well as 3D audio for an even more immersive experience. These titles are available for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and Si queréis, si queréis. No. Tengo pendiente pasarme el 7 en Xbox. Xbox One players can enjoy a free digital upgrade to current gen via the digital upgrade program and smart delivery. For PC users, an update patch will be available on the same date. For newcomers and veterans of survival horror alike, we hope you enjoy the immersion these new versions offer. Welcome to the family. 
That's all for today's announcements. Ya. Thank you. He hecho nada más. Ya. Pa. Vaya tela. That wraps up today's show. We hope you're as excited as we are about some of our upcoming games. Thank you to everyone, new and old fans alike. Esto sería algo que tendría que hacer cada cuantos meses, cuatro meses, cinco meses. Pues nada. Esto es todo, ¿no? Esto es todo, esto es todo, esto es todo, amigo. Vaya tela. Pues nada. Nos quedamos con ganas de más cositas. ¿Qué os ha parecido? <risa> a ver. Voy a quitar el volumen porque no suena. Voy a hacer un repaso rápido. A ver, me hubiera esperado un poquito más, ¿vale? Está bien, ¿vale? Monster Hunter, la DLC. A la gente le ha gustado mucho. Es verdad, está muy chulo. Los recopilatorios que está ahora mismo de moda. Tanto con Ami también lo está haciendo. Va a salir de las Tortugas Ninja. Después tenemos el Exo Primal. Juego multijugador que va de ni fu ni fa. El Dragon Doma que pudieran haberlo liado mostrando algo. Lo han dejado para el día 16 en un par de días. Y ya luego obviamente el tercera persona del Village y el DLC. Quizás lo más fuerte. De Resident Evil 4 han mostrado un poquito más. Pero ¿por qué no dicen que es un, un pueblo de España? Si está clarísimo. Yo no creo que toquen ese tipo de música la, en la parte francesa y más al norte. La vayamos menos todavía. O sea, es que me parece ridículo. Aparte que el nombre ganado es castellano. Pero bueno. No lo entiendo. No, no, no lo entiendo. Soy raro y no lo entiendo. Pues el evento está bien. Pero ha sido flojillo en general. Me esperaba más. Bueno, yo como estaba liado con las elecciones andaluzas. Estaba, en las elecciones andaluzas estaba más emocionante que esto. <risa> no, no, pero ahora en serio, mola, mola. Mola que saquen el tema del, del Resident Evil. Lo de las texturas ya lo sabíamos. El modo de ray tracing y demás. De hecho, lo voy a probar un poco ya. Y nada, no sé. Vosotros, gente, ¿qué pensáis? Dejadmelo abajo en los comentarios. Yo creo que nos quedan ya muy pocos eventos por ver. ¿Vale? Nos quedan algún que otro evento por ver. Y sería lo siguiente, el Dragon Dogma. Y el Kini me recordó el otro día que el Final Fantasy. O sea que dos eventos. El Final Fantasy creo que era el veintitanto o el 16. No me acuerdo. A ver, vamos a comprobarlo. Ya que estoy aquí, lo vamos a comprobar y lo vamos a dejar el jueves por la noche. Pues nada, el jueves por la noche lo veremos. Tenemos Dragon Dogma y Final Fantasy. Así que espero veros por aquí y obviamente lo resubiré al canal. Y por el grupo de Telegram a ver si hablamos un poquito qué vamos a hacer. O sea, qué vamos a jugar en directo. A mí me gustaría continuar con, con el Fable, la verdad. Me lo paso bien. Un juego muy ameno de jugar y más tranquilote. Así que espero vuestros comentarios. Venga, gente. Muchísimas gracias por verme. Dale like, comentar, suscribiros, los de siempre. Y hasta la próxima. Cuídense y pórtense bien.